Okay. But oh, thank you. All right. Come out. Uh, no, it was a display. It was like a display one and two. It was now expanding the display has changed. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Ready? Everyone ready? Yeah. Let's get started finally. All right, I'll skip the introduction because I just introduced myself. So chill, everyone knows. Uh, first, um, the agenda. So we're going to start with the purpose. We're going to go to the problem, the solution. Uh, why now? The market potential, competition, business model, the team, financials, and we're going to close with the vision. So first, the purpose of chill is redefining bubble G. So like I mentioned um, before, we are different, we are vegan, we are the first one, low calorie, zero calorie, and artificial flavors, but we are more than that. Our mission statement is there. It's about um, changing the, the consumption habits to more healthy and more sustainable. And the problem that we have today is that the current moment in the market are full of sugar, full of artificial flavors, and dairy, they're not um, as healthy as we would like. And the solution, chill. Because um, it's low calorie, zero sugar, it's vegan, and that's what we're going to bring. And why now? Because or because of three things. Um, first one is it's the vegan trend. A lot of people are becoming vegan today. Some people are uh, opting for vegan uh, options in their meals and their drinks, and uh, quitting the dairy either for health for health issues or for lifestyle for animal cruelty. You know, because so these are the trends. Not from Batista. Everything is growing exponentially. And the second reason is because that it is a coffee substitute. A lot of people are quitting coffee as well because it has a lot of health issues concerned with that. And maybe you can see that younger generation, they are basically half of people prefer tea instead of coffee. And they are targeting that population. And also, the third reason is because the boba fever. We can see that also the boba. Uh, our right to stay here in the US, the West. It's very common already in the future. And we'll explore that for, for Europe, for Latin America in the future, thinking big. The focus now is the US, of course, California, we're very still small, but we're gonna we want to uh, buy a share of this market. And here is the market potential. Uh, on, in 2020, it was almost two billion dollars in uh, the entire world, the global milk tea market. And just in the US, it grows exponentially 9% compound per year, and worldwide about 12%. And it's going to be uh, almost $5 billion market by the end of 2020. So the competition, like I mentioned, of course, the regular bobas that we see um, around, we see mass food in other areas of LA. When I arrived here in LA, there was only one boba shop, but there are three. And they always have lines crossing the block of our school. We're going to have our store there too. I'm going to mention about that. We also compete because we are an alternative drink for the morning or the afternoon. And we compete with other sodas or other types of milk or isotonic juice and uh, energy drinks. So we want to, we are better than that. We are healthier, we are vegan, we are low calorie and sustainable. Our business model uh, basically, we have these five stages here. We're starting with the events and farmers market and the food truck. And also the B2B, this is kind of like our, our next steps right, right now. And after that, after we're establishing the event, oh. we want to have our own mobile shop starting in the West, and like I mentioned, it's growing. And eventually, we want to have that franchise and expand to the rest of the state, have other units. We want to have our first three or five stores as the standard for to franchise, and then we can copy the model and, and roll out to, to the rest of the and other areas. Um, I, I drafted here a business model canvas, and it has the key activities, partners, competitor position, also a draft of the revenues and the costs. Um, I can send this in the detail later to publish the canvas. I'm not going to go now because we have time. And of course, our team, these are the founders. We are all students. Um, our CEO, you, the guy who created the formula, he has a PhD here from CLA, just graduated tomorrow at the commencement. Ian and Jake also they go to one goes to UCSP, the UCSP, the other goes to CSUN. And myself, uh, I'm doing my certificate in general to business studies here at the station. I work for Budweiser before. And we only most of us live at the co-op, the University of Southern Italian Association, where it's a dorm, it's a student dorm, and 
and we had the idea one day at breakfast. So I want to mix to be in our meal because we want to give challenges cows and how like we used to milk and have this idea. Initially, we were trying to do the CBD meal, then we pivot to the vegan milk, and now we're going to the boba because it makes more sense. We already rolled in 150k investment, a grant from Home Price. We won like two weeks ago at UC Davis, another startup competition, 10k. And we are uh, also competing in other startup competition. And we're going to open for crowdsourcing, crowdfunding, excuse me, uh, to close our team stay with at least 500,000 euros. This is how our spending is. Uh, this is our financial. So just an uh, estimate of the revenue that we have here. The units uh, broken down by index, the food trust, B2B, and the online. These are our focus right now. And uh, extended to the next five years, this is our growth. Also, the cash flow, I brought the cash flow here because it's how we calculate the NPV, the net present value, and the valuation of the company. We're looking to a 10 million company right now. Um, these are the projections. Our vision for the future want to be more than the, just the global milk tea. We want to be a company who changes the consumption habits that, that like I mentioned, to a more sustainable and more healthy. We want to have water efficiency items. We want to have food, vegan alternatives. And even uh, fashion, we want to like invest in our brand and why not technology and going global. So these are our vision for the future. And that's why I'm um, here today to learn like all this business plan. Send it to investors, send it to startup competitions, and they'll have a chance of any question that you have. You can add me on LinkedIn or follow us on Instagram. And thank you very much. I have a question about your expansion. Okay, I know that you mentioned earlier you started like selling at the farmer's market and then you want to expand all the way to franchising. Okay, so my question to you would be. Okay, if you can you handle, you know, right now you're handling a small amount of selling through farmers market. Yeah, correct. Uh -huh. Okay, can your production handle selling, like for example, if you get uh, routes tomorrow? Um, can you not dry routes? No, not yet. Because um, can you handle the arrow one? Yeah, thank you for the question. Because we have a co-packer and uh, we are still getting contract with a manufacturer to increase our volume to like 20,000 bonds per all. Right now we have around probably one quarter of that. We can produce like 5,000 bottles with our co-packer, but we, we change from our co-packer. We, we are bringing to in-house production, which makes things way more complicated because we need to deal with all the operations. We need to hire people, we need to have all the equipment, we need to, we need to uh, like sanitize our bottles and do all the problems. Do you know how much money you need for that? Um, Right now, the, our investment, uh, we have the budget for that, for our warehouse, it's already counting on that. But to supply this first stage here, yeah, for the farmer's market, and kind of like one or two stores or three stores per grocery store. Because even if you have a high production, I'm, I'm not sure if it's going to sell that much. And the problem that we have right now, the main problem besides the capacity of our warehouse, is it's only seven days shelf life. So these big guys, they don't want to work with us yet because it's too short shelf life. Um, and they can't have like the, the, the volume, the turnover. Is there anywhere to organically make that a longer shelf life? Yes, we are studying uh, having a pasteurization method with a third party, also partner, to extend to three months at least. And that is, is on our radar right now. But it's going to take probably another three months until that's ready. Will that add a lot to the cost? Will that add a lot to the cost? That method? No, it doesn't change much our cost because we already have like a very small margin. Our cost is very high because of the, the model that we have to buy each one on $1.50. That's why we're also going to switch from the model to the cups and probably study having a local because our model comes from Colorado. We want to change to a local supplier or we want to increase our volume so we decrease the, the price of the bond. Can you go plastic? Uh, we consider that we receive offers from other co packers to, to have the plastic, but it, it kind of contradicts a little bit of our, our purpose of being stable. How about paper? How about, you know, never talk about paper? Uh, huh? Maybe, maybe there's an alternative. Yeah, Does that affect your shop price? 
Probably, probably because um, like it's shorter. Yeah, that may be shorter than seven days. Yeah, if you want to go with a CPG with a B2B, like I mentioned, yeah, we need like a larger. And, from, yeah. and that's a different business model. So that's like the CPG uh, to serve the grocery stores and supermarkets and uh, convenience stores, restaurants. And the other business model that are focused right now is kind of the food service, the restaurants, which is like fresh to, to drink. It's, it's kind of like one or two days mm -hmm. shelf life. It's not even made to store. But as an investor, that's where my money is. I want my money there. Uh, I'm not going to make any money off of this. I'm not going to make any other money off of this. Mm -hmm. I want you here. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm going to make money. Mm -hmm. I don't care about you here again. This is for you. You can make money off of this. Uh -huh. I'm not going to make money until you get here. Uh -huh. So until you get your pasteurization done, until you get three months shelf life, I'm not going to make money. Mm -hmm. So yeah. tell me how you're going to get there. Uh -huh. And by the way, you co-packer, I need for you to have two co-packers uh -huh. and you yourself do it in order yeah. to be able to get me there. Uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing our business plan, that's the idea. It's kind of two different business models. And right now, right now, for the at least this, this month and probably the, the next part of the summer, we are trying to focus in the caravan, um, which is a food truck, because we want to have the store and franchise that. Because actually, this is a big deal, of course, yeah. From, but I don't see this as a, the most uh, heaviest part of the business. Is the you can't franchise. franchise. You can't franchise. Don't even mention the word franchise. Because franchise takes longer than this. Mm -hmm. Because franchising, you have to now ship it, take a packet, mm -hmm. then from packing it, ship it to the, to the franchisee. Franchisee now only has two days to go and sell it. Yeah, that's, that's why I wish it's going to be two separate uh, business. Yeah. Like Starbucks, they have to that's but they package can. coffee that they sell everywhere. But then there's more, the smaller part of the business. The heaviest part is the store, the coffee shop, where they sell like fresh to But you can't franchise it. Franchise yeah, no, uh, you're not even out. close to franchise. I wouldn't even mention franchise. Franchising is all different animal. Uh, even your own retail store is a whole different animal. You you need to this. While you're doing this to make money, you need to work on this because that's where I make money. Yes, I, I agree. I don't um, care about this. To link those, those parts to the supermarkets, um, that's more like of a marketing tool. Okay. Our marketing there is very small and it's kind of like an operational nightmare to do the public market and hire people and have all the structure. And also, the food truck is very difficult to manage. It's simpler, we just sell the bottles. Um, but yeah, I see here we have a ton of competition. That's it, it's not our exactly our goal. And there's already actually other bobas like canned boba selling in the, in the farmer's market like for a uh, lower price. Here we're gonna face a lot of competition and we need to pay a lot of money for them. So if you yeah. start selling as well, I don't even know how much you need to pay we need to pay to get that like shelf space there. You know, like five crowns, I don't know, that's like Fifty thousand dollars. I don't even know. Yeah, if you want to start, no, I can put you in touch with someone that can help you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like that. I'm uh, figuring that out because they use sell for that. Okay, so thank you. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. I have a question. <clears throat> Do you plan on always sticking to the, the bottles? Will this be the same flavor? Is there any evolution? No. Uh, thank you for the question. Yeah. Actually, uh, as of now, we have five flavors in a few green R and D to develop different flavors. But the idea at least for well for, for the store for the mobile shop and the food truck in advance, we want to have even seasonal flavors. We want to have our um our main flavors for the strawberry, cinnamon, and chocolate, and add like a different amount every part of it, like Thai tea or taro <coughs> and um, banana, you know, chocolate with mango. And but probably for the bottles you're gonna stick to Last flavors, and as we find like a way to pasteurize and extend the shelf life, we can have more flavors. You know, because that makes sense to have like different skills so we can compete with other stuff in the shelf. Because only two, two or three flavors wouldn't make a trade like this. Because we want to try more. From the experience that I have from the farmers, why we want and they ask for different flavors. And if you see like the yogurt stand, the vegan yogurt stand right next to us, they have like 35, 35 flavors. But ours is like a uh, bowl with tea, and that's kind of where we're going to go. Do you have any problems like people 
allergies or something? Is there anything big? Uh, yes. Uh yeah, you you got it. Um, we started with the almond oil, and that was becoming an issue because some people they didn't want to buy because it has nuts as almond. So we switched to oatmeal. We changed our, our flavor a little bit. We got a little more savory. Um, but still, you know, it has a strawberry base and chocolate. Um, I, people didn't, I, I, that's my personal experience. I don't have anything or any service so I didn't buy that. But yeah, we want to stick to the old meal. Okay. But we'll have the other options. If you go to a boba shop, they have these options. Yeah. Not all of them, mostly are almond meal or soy meal. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have all of them, but they mainly the old meal. And not the area at all, because the other ingredients are Yeah. Um, once you go up, Economy of scale better, 
so we can reduce our cost mm -hmm. so that we can be prepared so that we can go to the supermarket eventually forget about the whole franchise that's like right. you gotta just get me to this and then worry about everything else the other two next Thing starts, forget about it. Yeah, maybe a store you can do the store, but that's after the supermarket is the way you're gonna make money. But first, you, you have to use this to make enough money, uh, reduce your thing. Also, by the way, look at that uh, one man per quarter. Oh, okay, you know, stuff like that is you gotta be very careful about. Yeah, okay, so that now the good stuff is you know your market, you know your answers, you're giving good answers. You're confident, you look people in the eye, that's very important as far as looking people in the eye. Very confident when he's answering questions, he looks you, he's confident he answers because even if he doesn't know the answer, even if the answer is wrong, when he's looking you in the eye and he's answering it confidently, you're not going to question it, okay? Because you don't know the market as much as you that. So look people in the eye. If you start going like this, look at what I'm looking at, Tara. You know, uh, and, and then, um, yeah, we are going to go and answer uh, into that market, but we're not sure whether we, we you know, I'll then you don't trust the answer, okay? But if he's looking at you with the answer, confidently in the answer, he could be saying, yes, me and Donald Duck are going to be selling a million of these pieces tomorrow, okay? The confidence that he gives is more important than the answer that he's actually giving sometimes, of course. Eventually, just so you know. So that's that's one of the things you have to learn. Um, that, so that was good. Good showing of the exec. I like that this slide with the exec. It was very good. Notice in every exec he discussed, he said talked about the exact benefit that that exec brings to the table. Oh, he's a PhD in this kind of food. Uh, I work for Budweiser. You know things like that. He brings what that person exec brings to the table. That was really good. I like that. Okay, he had a very good taste. It wasn't too fast, it wasn't too slow. He handled it really well. He did it in six minutes.